Hi, I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. Welcome to part 4 of this video series. If you haven't checked the other videos, the links are in the description. Part 1, we create the model. Part 2, we made UVs. Part 3, we created our texture maps. And here in part 4, we're going to connect our texture maps to our shader to do our final renders. Now let's dive into Maya. We have our Arnold shader here, and we're going to click on the checkerboard here to add files. And I'll do the bump later. So when I render, you don't see much changes, and it doesn't look like our specular map is affecting this. That's because it's currently looking at our alpha channel, and our alpha channel is just white. We didn't make an alpha channel, but this is not a big deal. Because it's a black and white image, we can just use any of the other RGB channels. So all of these are nodes. So I'm going to click on this little circle, and as I drag out, you can see I got this like noodle type thing. So I'm going to drag that noodle right into specular roughness. So now we can see that the R channel of my color file is connected to the specular roughness of my AI standard shader. Now if we render, we can immediately see how much it has changed. And it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Those areas where the specular is white, you can actually see some of the color because since it's more matte, you can see the color coming out. And so you can see that sort of dusty dirt look. So now, if you don't really like your specular map or you want to make changes to it, you can go back to Photoshop and you can add some more gray values or you can play with your level settings or other different adjustments in Photoshop. But you can also change your color directly inside of Maya. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's not as difficult as you might think. Photoshop is looking at your color values as numerical values. So one is white, zero is black, and the numbers in between are different shades of gray. If I hit tab, do you see this search bar appear? You can begin by typing the name of any Maya node and it will create it here. And I'm going to create a multiply divide node. Once I have that node, I'm going to plug in the R channel from my specular roughness file into the first input X of my multiply divide node. If we select our multiply divide node and look at it in the attribute editor, the way that we read this currently is that our input 1X value is connected to our specular map and our input 2x value is currently 1. These two numbers are the ones being multiplied. And you can see here it has the operation multiply. You could also switch it to divide, but we're going to keep it on multiply. And now if we connect our output x, which is the resulting value of those two inputs being multiplied together to our specular roughness, if we render it looks the same because we're just multiplying by 1. Anything multiplied by 1 is the same value. Before I start adjusting values, I want to explain this a little further. So we're going to do a little bit of math. First, we know that our painted texture has 1, 0, and all the in-between values, because 1 is white, 0 is black, and all the in-between are different shades of gray. So I'm going to do the So if I change my input 2x value to 0.5, anything in my texture that is white or the number value 1, multiplied by 0.5 is going to be 0.5. Anything that is 0.5, kind of like a middle gray color, times 0.5, is going to be now 0.25, so it's going to be a darker gray value. And anything multiplied by 0, or black in this case, is going to be 0. If I multiply by 2, 1, or white, times 2 is going to equal 2, so it's just going to be a blown out white. 0.5 times 2 is going to be 1, so anything that's in the middle, mid gray level, is going to go up to being just white, and anything multiplied by 0 is always going to be 0, so black. If I divide, it will have the opposite effect for the numbers respectively. So the same thing is what's happening in our multiply divide node. If I change input to x and render it, you can see how it changes. Some parts of the specular are either more specular or less specular, depending on what value I choose to multiply. Now, it's not good to have values past 1 because 1 is already white and you're just adding more data that's not necessary to calculate and could cause problems. So what we want to do is we want to tell Maya that any number larger than 1 should actually stay at 1 and shouldn't go past the number 1. You may not want anything in this bell to be pure black because if you're making something that has some dust, there might not be anything that's 100% clean on this bell. So we could also tell Maya that even though there's black inside of this image or the value of 0, we can tell Maya that anything below, let's say 0.1, change it. Don't let it go below 0.1, make it 0.1 the minimum value. So to do this, we need another node. So I'm going to hit tab. And the node that I want to look for is clamp. When you click on it and look at it in the attribute editor, you can see there's a min number and a max number. So right there, for max, I'm going to put 1. And for min, I can play with a different gray value and try to see which one works for me. 
So this will only allow the maximum value to be one throughout the entire map, regardless of what number it's multiplied and increases to. It'll clamp or seal itself at that number. The same thing will happen with the minimum. Any value that I put lower than that minimum is going to revert to that minimum number. So now if I plug in the output x of my multiply divide node into the value of my clamp and then from my clamp's output into my specular roughness, you can see that when I render, my numbers have been adjusted. So my clamp is now being into effect, not allowing those numbers to go past the max or below the min. So between your clamp and your multiply divide node, you could really get a lot of range and alter your specular. You can do this with anything. You can do it with the color or you can do it with any other texture value. So you can use multiply divide nodes and a clamp node in order to start adjusting your texture inside of Maya without having to go back and forth into Photoshop. So that's a little bit of an advanced tip inside of this beginner's tutorial that can really help you work a little faster and give yourself a lot of range of how you can texture. And you can really change a lot about your model and have it as an attribute that other people can adjust if they wanted to. Now let's look at our bump map. The bump attribute is under the geometry section of your Arnold shader. Again, I'm going to plug in a file for this attribute. Now, if we look at our hyper shade, we see that this extra node appeared in between my file and the AI standard shader, and it's called a bump node. We don't want to use the alpha channel, so I'm going to get the R channel and insert it into my bump value instead. If we click on the bump node, we see this value attribute is set to one. If I click render, you see this texture looks way too drastic. It's very lifted. That's because the value of one is a little bit too high and it's creating too much of a lift. And you can see it's fake because the edges of my model haven't changed. Like it's still that same, I have that same silhouette even though things are being lifted and pushed down. So this is also why bump is just something really subtle that you wanna use. So since it is something really subtle, the value number that we choose also has to be really subtle. So I'm gonna drastically lower this value, something like this and render. Now I'm just gonna go back and forth, testing different values and rendering to see which value works best with the texture that I created. As you can see, I picked a really low value. Even though it is a really low value, it gives it a nice subtlety that subconsciously we know that should exist, even though we can't 100% see it, or it's not something that's like a super drastic change, but that nice subtleness is what really sells your model and makes it look more realistic. Now that you have your shader set up and several attributes connected, you can now play with these settings and see how it affects your final product. And you have something that's now ready to render. So in the Arnold render settings, you have several attributes you can adjust to fine tune some of these pixelation issues. If you look up here, there's some really large numbers. And if you look below it, the attribute names corresponds with the names that are up there. And what's happening here is that these numbers that you can adjust, they're multipliers to how Arnold calculates. And that actual multiplication result is what's being shown up here in those attribute names that you can't adjust. Camera is a multiplier to all of these other attributes below it. And the ones below it are actually just fine tuning that one attribute that it's specifying. So since we have a lot of specular and our reflection is tied to our specular, that's probably the one you're gonna increase the most to get better results in your model. And I always like to adjust camera maybe by just one or two. You don't really want to adjust it too much because again, it multiplies everything, all of these attributes. And the higher these numbers are, the longer your render is going to take. So you really only want to, you wanna adjust these settings very small. In a render like this, I might just bump my camera one number, do a render, see how long it takes, look at what it looks like. Now go to my specular, since I know that's one really big one that I use. Adjust my specular by one number, see what it looks like, maybe two numbers if I have to. But I really try not to go crazy increasing these numbers because it's gonna increase my render time and it might not necessarily be necessary to increase my render time so much. So these are really things that you just kinda have to get, to have to play with and get a feel for, and you'll understand them better the more you practice and the more you adjust them. One more thing to note, if you don't want your HDRI background image to render, all you have to do is select that dome light and here under camera, change this value. Now when you render, you see that the background is just black and now you have a clean alpha on just your bell. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new.
Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff, our social media pages, and our Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video.